In this video, I'll cover two important structures in any language, the if statement and logical operators. I'll also introduce the if-else and which functions. I'm going to occasionally rely on the stock data used in the last video, but to keep things simple, I'm also going to omit any rows that have an NA value, as these represent missing observations in the data. An if statement is used to execute some section of code on the condition that a particular statement is true. In this setup, the code inside the braces will run if the condition is true. For example, suppose I want to check whether the first entry in the stock data was up or down. If it was up, I want to create a variable called status that takes the value up. It would also be informative to label the status as down if the stock is down, so I'll add an else statement. The code in the second set of braces will execute if the condition is false. However, this still isn't quite right. What if the stock opens and closes at the same price? I can add a condition for the second set of code using a second if statement after the else command. Then I'll add another else command at the end that labels status with a value of flat if the stock is flat for the day. I also want to briefly mention the if else function, which could be used in this context to create an up, down, flat vector for all the elements in the stock's data in just a few lines of code. The ifelse function takes three arguments, a vector of length one or more that contains true and false values, a value to take for each true instance, and a value to take for each false instance. Though this still isn't quite right because I need to return a value of down if the close is lower than the open. I can do this by creating a second condition and I need one more ifelse command. Here I've done something subtle. I provided the status argument for those cases where the close is not lower than the open. I've exploited a special feature of the ifelse function, which is that when a vector of length greater than 1 is provided in the second or third arguments, ifelse will be performed element-wise for that argument. I'll leave it to you to verify that this code works and why it works. You should think about each possible case. A stock can be up, down, or flat and I strongly recommend you create some test data and work your way through each step of the code. Next, I want to talk about logical operators. I'm going to create a vector with 10 random integers between negative 1 and 13, and a second vector in the same way. I'd like to know whether all the elements in x are greater than 0. I might intuitively start by using the command x greater than 0. However, as R does in many other scenarios, it also performs this check element-wise. Here you can see I have a vector of true and false values, but I can use the all function around x greater than 0 to answer the question as to whether all of the values of x are greater than 0. We can also check other things, such as, do any elements of x line up with those in y? This again returns a vector of true and false, but this time I can use the any function to check whether any of the values are equal. We can also do other checks that relate x and y. For example, consider the separate commands x greater than 0 and y greater than 0. If I wanted to check in which elements this was true in both vectors, I could use a single ampersand between the commands. Here, the single ampersand means to check whether both the first and the second condition are true on an element-wise basis. There's a similar OR command using a pipe or a vertical line character that creates an element-wise basis on whether one statement or the other statement is true. R, like other languages, also has a double ampersand and double pipe notation, though I'm going to move on. If you're interested in this, you should check out the help file for XOR. The last topic I wanted to cover in this video is the which function used to identify which elements or observations satisfy a particular condition. For example, I'd like to know which observations had a big intraday fluctuation. To begin, I'll create an object called fluctuation that gives the raw intraday fluctuation. I can scale the fluctuation by dividing the difference by the opening share price of the day. Next, I'll create a condition for whether the fluctuation was greater than, say, 25%. This is a boolean vector of true and false values that report whether each row in the data frame satisfied or did not satisfy this big fluctuation condition. 
If I want to do the vector reporting just those rows that satisfy the condition, I can use the which function. These rows represent observations where the stock price fluctuated by more than 25% in a day. If I wanted, I could examine each of these rows in the original dataset. In the next video, I'll talk about for loops.